What up, guys? Uh, B Lifter, obviously. Um, yeah, today I'm just gonna show you some uh, some build effects, some couple ways to uh, you know add some filter sweeps or EQ sweeps, and uh, how to just uh, add automation if you don't know how. Some automation tricks, uh, just some cool effects you can do with uh, just by reversing a kick. Put a resonance filter on it, um, and just like reverb and delay and whatnot. Uh, and delay time is big. Like if you're using a delay, and it's showing you in milliseconds how long your like pre-delay is or your delay is, um, depending on the BPM of your song, that's how long you want your delay to be. So if your BPM is 150, your delay is. 40, you want your delay to be like 40 milliseconds or you could just uh, have it you know sync to the grid or um, yeah whatever you want uh, that's usually what I do with my reverbs um, I'll put the pre the pre delay to 40 milliseconds and my yeah sometimes I'll even put uh, just the decay the reverb um, to four seconds uh, sometimes like if I'm using reverb on my kicks and stuff I'll keep it to 40 milliseconds and whatnot so just a little tip for you guys uh, well and depending on your BPM like if you're doing like 148 or even less if you're making a house or maybe even faster like 155 God, what you want to do is you want to go uh, I believe it's 60,000 divided by your, your BPM of your song and then that'll give you um, a general it'll just it'll say like 460 something or 400 and then you'll obviously put that in milliseconds so you know or it's either 60,000 divided by BPM or BPM divided by 60,000 Either way, try it, and then. But if you're at 150, it is 40 milliseconds. So keep your delays in the even numbers, unless you wanna, you know, throw the listener off and have, you know, delays at random times, which is also a cool strategy you can use if you know how to do it right. Uh, so as you can see, I did some stuff already. Um, that's because I did this tutorial <laughs> already twice. Um, first time failed, I don't remember why. Uh, second time I ended up at 19 minutes and didn't even realize it, and that's too long for me to put on YouTube. So, uh, so here's my lead right here. And as you can see, all I have on it right now is a low pass filter. So. If I go to my 3x oscillator, and here's how I made my lead. So, just look at this. Make sure these are turned up if you're using these oscillators. Make sure they're turned up in the mix. So that one's pitched down, detuned down. This one's pitched up, detuned up. And then this one stays the same. And then unison pan is 100%. This is 60%. And these are both at 8. Uh, and the glide times at 20%. And then I got a low pass filter on where these are both down at 0. Yeah, zero, zero, and then that one's at like 4.5 seconds. So, so if I, I'm playing my lead here, let's find it in the pattern. So, it's a simple lead, something I made up just quickly so I can show you guys an example. But uh, use your low pass filter, that's what I like to use. Um, and cutoff frequency is good too. Uh, so that's what you want to use. Uh, and this EG amount here is um, so that's a good way to build tension with your leads. Uh, to add like a nice build effect. So, I'll show you how I did that lead. So 
there's a lead right there. It's pretty simple. <laughs> I just added little bass notes here to fill in the gaps. Okay, so then I'm here. So I'm just showing you some simple stuff. I did all this quick. Uh, I just use a snare build that ends with the triplet. Uh, so I'll show you that. It's just it's usually um, you know a good way to build tension. You know use have a little snare drop in there to help build. So it's just you know. So I. Uh, in each bar or quarter bar, I have uh, six. So snare is hitting twice here, and it's hitting four times here, and it's hitting six. So that's a good way to build a snare. Uh, there's a lot of other ways too, um, but that's just one of them. Stick with that. So then here's my sweep, and just to make a sweep, I just, you know, use three X oscillator, and then clicked on all the noise. So sounds like noise, and then I just added some reverb delay, and some, and using the EQ as uh, the fil as the filter basically. So I'll show you as that's playing. So, oops. I did that is usually when you open parametric EQ 2, uh, it will usually be on this, right? So ignore that, ignore that. So it'll usually be, it'll just look like that generally. And then you just want to bring this down like three times until it looks like that. And you don't, you can use either one you want, but I always use this one just because. Uh, and then yeah, you just automate this here so it goes left, right, right to left like that. So high, low, high. Then I just added this up for a little extra effect. And you don't have to do that. It's just, just for this tutorial, whatever. And so, so we, so far we got this building, got the filter building, and then we have the siren in there, and I'll show you that as well. So I used uh, to make the siren. I used talk to biohazard. Really simple, really. Um, you just use a saw and no unison, no unison pan. It's just on mono, and it's just this frequency here. So, and then the effects on there just have some delay and reverb. So that's a good way to build through. So just automate that. And if you don't know how to automate um, what you want to do is you'll highlight in here, like highlight where you want to automate, otherwise it will automate throughout the whole song. And um, the Toxic Biohazard, I showed this in my other tutorial if you haven't watched it. Uh, you just you could either right click on the knob you want to automate and go create an automation clip, or if that doesn't work, make sure it's the last knob you touched, go to tools, last tweet and create automation clip. So um, usually with uh, like if you're using plugins that are in FL Studio plugins and they won't automate just by right clicking them and going create automation clip you probably like touch that knob and then go last tweet and go create automation clip and that'll be the way you want to do it. How much time? We're in 10 minutes already apparently. Wow. Okay so show you that how all that works quick. And then I'll show you another cool effect you can do with your kicks as well. 
Obviously it doesn't sound perfect right now because I haven't mixed it or done, you know, real in-depth tweaking, but it's just, it's all, whatever, it's just roughly put up there. Um, okay, so, another cool thing you can do with the kicks, ignore those, uh, those are just there so it won't stop playing and start looping from the beginning, but uh, what I did here is I just took my kick that I'm using and I just made it into an audio clip and I reversed it. So, as you can see, if you, I'm sure you've heard that before, if you've heard my other songs, or maybe even other people's songs, but, uh, but yeah, this is a cool little effect you can do, um, and all that is, I use Camel Crusher, which is a distortion plugin, it's pretty good too, even tone shifters use this to make their kicks, so, uh, this is a good plugin, and it's really simple, and it's free. So just go to CamelAudio.com, and yeah, it's a free plugin from them, and it works pretty good. So all I all I used here was to make that effect. Let's take a look. Because I just added and made sure the filter was on. Because if the filter is not on, it just sounds like that. So now my filter is on. My re my resonance is all the way up, and my cutoff is. Is there? And I just have some tube distortion up a little bit. Mac makes it sound too messy. So, and then just to you know make it a little more nice. So, it's a little much there. But snap that. Take some of that off too. There. Hopefully I sound a bit better now. Sound a little more meaty. But it's like a cool little effect you can do with your kicks for like builds or drops or breaks or wherever you want to use that. So um, hopefully this helped you guys. Sorry if it went a little fast. I just don't want to exceed my time limit again and do this for a fourth time. And uh, oh, before I go, check this out. It's uh, got this signed from Brendan Hart. I went to see him play on Saturday recently and uh, yeah ended up getting a photo with him and I was talking with him and shit it was pretty cool and uh, yeah um, hmm, I don't have much else to say just thought I'd show you guys that and yeah I'll, uh, I'll try to put up some more tutorials quickly because uh, the program I'm using to record all these is uh, almost up because I'm just on a trial right now <laughs> so I'll probably put some more out in the next uh, before five days because that's when my trial runs out so hopefully this helped you guys um, if you want to see that lead one more time so you can maybe try to use that in your song because I don't know if I'll use it uh, but maybe you can try it out but that's it right there so. Um, and yeah, so here's that one last time. That's the lead. There's my kick. There's the siren. And that's just for. That's all that is. Is the noise is on. And then I use the snare, and I made that snare using drums on, which is also what the pros use. So this plugin here, I paid for it. it cost me 150 bucks. And I also paid for Toxic Biohazard, and that cost me 100 bucks. But these are great plugins. This is great for making your samples for your song and whatnot. It's a great plugin. I do recommend it. Um, so I hope this helped you guys. Uh, Got to finish up here. So yeah, wow, right on time. Anyways, uh, later. I'm out of here. Peace.